the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So we see the story of Job. Number three, the third story in the Bible that talks about deliverance, of course, is the story of Israel and their captivity in Egypt. Nothing is more classic than that. Israel and their captivity and the deliverance that happened for them. Now, if you really want to study the, the context of deliverance, as it were, the deliverance of the nation of Israel, here's how you, you have to study from Genesis chapter 4 to Genesis chapter 10. It will give you sorry i did i say genesis exodus exodus please exodus chapter 4 to exodus no you don't have to put it media i'm just giving them exodus chapter 4 down to exodus chapter 10. it archives the entire journey that's where you record the 10 plagues remember all the plagues because moses departs from the presence of god and he goes to pharaoh and now he keeps returning bringing one plague after the other but then when you want to study the story of the deliverance out of egypt you begin your study from genesis 13 verse 17 genesis 13 verse 17 down to genesis 14 verse 31 genesis 13 verse 17 down to genesis 14 verse 31 gives you the complete story of the deliverance from egypt and ends with the red sea hallelujah so from the old testament we see that the subject of satan and evil and the deliverances that follow was not hidden the fall of man we see satan there the story of job we see satan there and then we see deliverance and israel and their captivity now let's go to the life and ministry of jesus quickly so we have passed test one based on the doctrinal requirements to be able to study and teach any subject from a doctrinal standpoint we see that in the old testament now in the life of jesus is there anything that relates to satan relates to his works and relates to the subject of deliverance number one the temptation of jesus the very i can i can list almost everything there but then just for reference the temptation of jesus we find that in luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 please give it to us luke chapter 4 1 to 3 then write 16 to 22 luke chapter 4 1 to 3 then 16 to 22 let me just read 1 to 3 the bible says and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness we're reading to verse 3 being 40 days tempted of who 40 days jesus tempted of the devil and the bible says in those days he did eat nothing and when the days were ended he was afterwards hungered verse 3 and the devil said to him if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread let's read verse 4 and jesus answered him who did he answer and said it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god so you read that and you find out that satan came to jesus and he came to carry out his ministry of deception his ministry of destruction and jesus did not ignore satan if jesus did not ignore satan we shouldn't ignore him jesus would have said satan i don't have any business i am the word of god let me focus on my father's agenda jesus turned to satan and spoke to him he said it is written number two 
jesus himself taught deliverance matthew chapter 12 please jesus taught among the many teachings matthew chapter 12 let's begin from verse 43 for sake of time here's what jesus taught jesus himself taught about satan and the fact that there was something about satan he wanted us to know he said when the when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none who is giving us this information jesus next verse then he saith i will return into my house from whence i came out and when he is come he findeth it empty swept and garnished next verse the bible says then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits more that means there is a structure jesus is the one showing us that all spirits are not the same jesus uses the expression more wicked that other spirits are more wicked seven others more wicked than himself and the bible says they come together as a team and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first look up so when a man's later state is worse than the first what is the diagnosis <laughs> it's in your bible that means the devil can afflict a man the devil can bring a condition and from a physical standpoint you will find out that the condition is deteriorating jesus is saying let me give you perspective to that something may have happened that can translate into that worsening situation are we together jesus himself taught on the subject of deliverance jesus administered deliverance himself he didn't just teach he administered deliverance we'll look at a few scriptures luke chapter 8 from verse 26 please write it down luke chapter 8 the bible says they arrived at the country of the gatherings this was the story of the madman in gadara well since we've started let's just read it we're reading it's a long reading to 39 let's hurry up very quickly verse 27 now the bible says and when he went forth to land he met out of the city a certain man certain man means it was not a parable that man really existed are we together which had what which had you see the word devils there it means then that the word devil is not just the name of a person it's a generic description it's a character are we together he says that he met a certain man who had devils how long so we see from this scripture that demons can remain for a long time time does not drive demons and were not clothes neither abode in any house but in tombs when he saw jesus he cried out and fell and fell down before him and with a loud voice he said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high that means demons are intelligent did you see it there they called jesus by an accurate description of who he truly was there is intelligence with demons i beseech thee he said torment me not for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for oft times it had caught him and it kept bound with chains and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness and jesus asked him saying what is thy name and he said legion this is an information because many devils were entered into him so the bible here reveals to us that multiple demonic spirits can coexist in a single human entity are we together now that it is not only one spirit per body as many demons as many as a legion these are very important information 31 and they besought him that he would not command them 
to go out into the deep uh-huh and the bible says and there was a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain and they besought him that he should suffer them to enter into the swine that means it is not only human bodies demons can enter what else did they enter And he suffered them next verse let's hurry up the bible says and went out the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran what violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked i'll show you why we're reading 34 and when they that fed them saw what was done they fled and went and told it to the city and in the country 35 then when they went out to see what was done everybody see that there are levels of deliverance now this man the spirit had left him is that true but see what else they found they came to jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed what was he doing sitting where at the feet of jesus that is another level the demons had left him the man would have gone but the bible says his place of security was to sit at the feet of jesus and now something was happening to his mind in his right mind so the spirit leaving him was not all it took it took him staying with jesus and then sitting at the feet of jesus and as a result something was happening to his mind his mind was becoming right i think we can stop there luke chapter 9 from verse 37 jesus administered deliverance himself the bible says and it came to pass that on the next day when they were come down from the hill much people met him this is peter james and john the mount of transfiguration the bible says and behold a man of the company cried out saying master i beseech thee look upon my son for he is my only child look how wicked the devil is and lo a spirit taketh him and he suddenly cried out and he teared him and he foamed again and bruising him hardly departed from him and i besought your disciples to cast him out and they could not everybody should be able don't rush media let's work together go to verse 40. everybody should be able to cast out demons but unfortunately not everybody is able to cast out demons potentially you would think everybody should be able to cast out demons based on the authority of scripture but in experience although these guys were the disciples of jesus we see that it takes more than just being with jesus to have the ability to cast out demons they were not rebels they were people who were walking with jesus and yet the bible says i besought who thy disciples to cast him out and they could not verse we're reading to 43 41 and jesus answered it said oh faithless and perverse generation jesus is telling us what was wrong now how long shall i be with you and permit you he says bring the son i love jesus ah that after this discussion that's what you will say too that when you go somewhere and they tell you our family everything you say bring bring that family i found something bring the son hither verse 42 and as he was yet coming the demons know who is who as he was yet coming before he came to meet jesus the bible says the devil threw him down and tear him and jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child two things happened one deliverance the other healing are you seeing that now so that man was not just he was not just demonized there were two conditions meaning that behind most sicknesses 
are spirits just ministering healing alone you may find out that your venture is frustrating most times in scripture you will see jesus casting out the spirit influence then releasing the power of god to correct the bodily deformity that that spirit caused are we learning now he rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father last verse and they were all amazed at the mighty power of god but while they wondered every one at the things which jesus did you know he said unto his disciples all of this um this kind go ahead not but by prayer and fasting so we see that jesus himself ministered deliverance is someone learning let's look at two more scriptures are you tired please don't be tired in the name of jesus christ luke chapter 8 let's start from verse 1 to 3 I just wrote a few here and it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him verse 2 the Bible says and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and healed of what evil spirits and infirmity and among them there was a woman called mary of magdala or mary magdalene how many demons came out of her the bible even will list it don't be afraid there is the imbalance part so you can trust me i'm a good pilot we will, will arrive safely in the name of jesus christ Out of whom seven went seven devils look at the advantage when people are delivered verse 3 and Joanna the wife of Chusa Herod steward and Susanna and many others the Bible says which ministered unto him of their that means there are partners there are helpers that the devil know that will stand with you and stand by you and this spirit will stop them it was on the strength of their deliverance if you are wondering where jesus got money from read your bible the bible is saying those women that have been impacted they have been delivered they went back and did whatever they did they had results and they returned back man of god this is the most this is the most scriptural way of funding for ministry that you change lives you impact people they go back they would not everybody will be too grateful to ignore you if people are really really changed seven demons out of this woman and she went back with her sound mind and she said no i will not forget the man that was used to save me and deliver me and the bible says they came and ministered to him when you are not changing lives and you want people to bless you in my opinion it's not sincere i can almost look at it as fraud in as much as you don't pay a man of god you can't pay for the anointing but i'm saying sincerely let me give you a secret spend your life blessing people not anticipating that you are blessing so that they will give you something let them have genuine results in their lives and leave them to surprise you it's cheaper than manipulation so if you if you are finding out why jesus and how jesus became so blessed that he had a treasurer it's not superstition it was not every day they went to the river to get money out of the mouth of a fish it would be a stupid way of thinking to believe that every day a fish will keep giving you coins the classic way that was a miracle to show something the standard scriptural way of raising money for ministry is not a, a fish will not be eating coin every day it was just a you know what god is teaching in that scripture that there will be moments of supernatural intervention but that is not god's classic way of doing it god cannot be helping you by intervention every day intervention means a principle was violated and a consequence came from it now the mercy of god is coming to bridge so waiting by a seaside how did i get here waiting by a seaside for a fish so you squeeze that fish wouldn't the fish eat it was just used for a miracle impact 
that people bless them sincerely let them encounter salvation healing let the word transform their minds let them go back with the word and produce results and i guarantee you the spirit of god who anointed you to bless them is the same spirit that will compel them to come back and bless you in fact let me say this let me say this respectfully to preachers and men of god building men is greater than building structures structures are fine don't get me wrong structures are great but let your structure not be finer than the men you are building a building can be destroyed government can bring a bulldozer in five minutes and collapse everything but you build men and the men will build the structure and if it falls they will build it again and if it falls they will build it again Matthew chapter 16 we're still starting you know you won't believe that we're just establishing the biblical basis for studying this but I believe someone is learning already Matthew chapter 16 verse 21 the Bible says from that time forth began jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day uh -huh. the bible says and peter ha now this deliverance issue is getting deeper i understand healing or uh, delivering somebody who is afar off but now jesus is showing us something this is among his fold peter you too haven't been with jesus jesus is talking about his death his passion and peter took him and began to rebuke him peter was rebuking jesus what was the rebuke be it far from thee lord this shall not happen to you should you not say amen to that statement and jesus looks at him and say even though this sounds like compassion satan has taken advantage of your compassion satan does not only use weaknesses he uses strengths too he's using peter's compassion here to advise jesus don't even think about dying we are not ready to lose you you would think that was a scriptural statement but if jesus heeded to that advice we we'll all be in hell today but he turned and said unto peter who did he speak to get thee behind me who i hope you know that until this time peter had gone to preach and return with results will you accept that kind of insult on your pedigree you went to preach your ministerial teaching practice you return with potent result please keep that scripture and then jesus looks at you from a compassionate heart and says get thee behind me satan he said for thou art an offense unto me for thou serverest not the things that be of god but the things that be of men next verse 24 then jesus said unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me i'm sure peter left confused satan get thee behind me what do you think the disciples will do to him you think they will eat in the same place that day we don't know where you have you have been fishing at the river remember river Rhine area only god knows what would have happened to you there that jesus is now rebuking you <laughs> can i tell you this there is a lesson here in as much as we are laughing the lesson is that sometimes it takes discernment more than the physical fashion of people to know that they need deliverance they can be well behaved and calm if you see someone misbehaving it's easy to show that there is a spirit but there are times even your compassion and the positive aspects of you satan can slip through it and you will still be coordinated and not know peter did not know that something had happened to him the same way someone can come and advise you and say look the way this thing is don't you think you should leave nigeria just go i'm not saying it's wrong yeah except if it's god that is telling you 
just leave nigeria and go somewhere you are having a job that is paying you five hundred thousand, and the person can even come and sincerely tell you i had a dream what is wrong with having a dream and the person sincerely had a dream oh you will be so blessed in this series i will show you that many dreams that people are having that is leading to many problems in their lives were manipulations by demon spirits taking advantage of your sincerity yes sir there are many people who have no business starting ministry but the devil masqueraded as an angel of light and showed them a dream that supposedly looked like ministry they left everything they were doing and moved to another bishopric they are suffering today thinking is persecution and they do not know that they are veered of the plan of god i pray that in this series god will restore many people there are people who have no business no business going abroad except that sometimes a preacher did not even know he was not under the influence of the holy spirit and he spoke to them and said do you know what i i want you to leave leave this place go to lagos or go to london or go to this place and in obedience and loyalty believing it was the voice of god they moved hoping to get into greener pastures and some of them have met all kinds of things i hope you know that we are not being judgmental we're people of love is because we are teaching the subject of deliverance that's why i ask you to pray that god will open your eyes peter how could satan so slip into peter that he did not even know one last scripture matthew chapter 10 from verse 7 and 8 jesus was sending the disciples who would later become apostles of the lamb and he said as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand verse 8 heal the sick jesus is giving them an instruction now cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out that means if it is true evangelism you must meet devil somewhere they will be waiting for you in men they will be waiting to, for you in cities everywhere you see them cast them out hallelujah so we see this in the old testament we see this in the new testament now very quickly let's examine the life of the apostles and the early church for starters acts chapter 8 and verse 5 very quickly now acts chapter 8 and verse 5 philip went down to the city of samaria the bible says and preached christ unto them verse 6 and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did verse 7 what was a miracle for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many that were what possessed with them and many that were taken with palsies and were lame were healed verse 8 the bible says and there was great joy in that city scripture number two acts chapter 16 we'll start from verse 16. the full text is to 21 but we'll just read 16 to 18. remember the bible says it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of what divination so you see that it is it is very very it is very very usual in the bible for spirits to be named based on how they behave spirit of divination there is the lying spirit there is a spirit of death are we together so here we have a lady possessed with a spirit and the bible names the spirit by its character it's called the spirit of divination that she met us which brought her masters much good by sooth saying meaning she brought rewards they were financial rewards verse 17 we can study this all night dear people of god there are so many things to learn from just this one verse the bible says the same followed paul and us be careful who follows you just because people are following you does not mean they are of the same spirit the bible says this spirit this lady was having a spirit of divination and she brought profit there is a relationship between divination and profit so you be careful not every profit is profit this is the bible never said the lady brought loss to them 
just because you are receiving rewards does not mean it is of god you must be careful the spirit of divination can also bring profits now watch this the bible says she followed paul and us and cried saying these men are servants of the most high god which showed us showed unto us the way of salvation question was she lying hmm. when the devil lies you know but what if the devil tells the truth because when the devil knows that you don't like lies he will use truth on you you've heard me say truth can kill truth is like a knife it is not only a lie the devil uses to kill he can use truth and kill the same followed paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high god why don't you like people who are publicizing what you are doing genuinely and sincerely which show us the way of salvation do you know the deception this is the classic character of satan you know what satan was achieving here they were visitors in that city so when satan sees that he cannot fight you he will seek partnership and the way he will partner with you is by promoting what you represent so that the day you are not in that city when they can't find you they will find who was with you that's the strategy satan was using here they were only there for a few days and they would leave but the girl was there to stay and the strategy invented was don't fight them support them promote their evangelism after a few days they will leave so that if we cannot find paul because he's far we can find the diviner girl and her ministry continues watch this now please give us that scripture the bible says she did this many days so it was not a mistake she did this many days and the bible says i'm paul being grieved being grieved for supporting you being grieved for promoting you the bible says he turned and said to the spirit i command thee in the name of jesus christ to come out of her paul teaches us how to cast out devils that you command them not in your name you command them in the name of jesus to come out of her the bible says and he came out the same hour now i don't want you to read to 21 because you will see that there were consequences that followed when that spirit left look at what happened in fact let's just read 19 and stop there the bible said when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone what happened they caught paul and silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers twisted a story so that we'll have them flogged you know paul and silas this is how they got to that prison by casting out that means it is not only how to cast out demons you must know you must also know how to command deliverance for yourself for the consequence of casting out demons because when you cast out demons there can be consequences those spirits will start moving men and systems and structures to come against you but paul and silas said we were well trained at midnight makato skali it is not only casting out demons we understand deliverance we know how to let these chains leave us at midnight listen i don't mean to scare you and we're not glorifying satan but this is why it is important for people to be mentored and trained this our proud generation of arrogance just because someone falls down people believe they have all it takes they have the spiritual understanding they go and tore into the enemy's camp a shrine that was there before your grandfather was born you just sweep everything and pack away your health pack away your sanity and throw it in the bush and find out that by the next day the only part of you that is moving is your right hand now because it's true that you may in you intended to command deliverance for the city but do you know the other dynamics they are called the weapons of victory the bible says before you tore the camp of the enemy make sure you have upon you something called the whole armor of god are we together sincerely not 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 to be sarcastic 
but i know in my time in ministry i have seen people even preachers who just took the risk to challenge native doctors challenge herbalists and the man was warning him I won't listen i came into this city i am three months old i am a child of god jesus died for me you are right but your revelation will soon show because there were other men who spoke like that and they went back untouched tl osborne would step into a city scatter hell like that and go back reinhard bonke went everywhere from congo to nigeria to everywhere just help those under the anointing now please look up uh, you've always heard me say before you stand before pharaoh make sure you have seen the burning bush pharaoh is a wizard he will ask you who sent you but the people that do know their god not just the people who want to move it is the people that do know their god can you pray in the spirit in one minute your life is changing you are gaining ascendance in the spirit marvelous god they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course but i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes hallelujah hallelujah now please listen there are people who have gone to confront the gates of darkness please sit down and they left with casualties untold but there are others who went to the gates of darkness dared them to their faces scattered them until today they keep standing as if satan does not exist the difference is light are we together growing up i would watch reinhard bunker laugh and get to regions where people dread to go to organize his crusade and ask people to bring all their instruments of divination have you watched it go and watch his videos he does not just i in my opinion no i don't believe that man was just an evangelist a man that preaches and a shrine can be born in somewhere that's more than evangelism are we together they would bring all the instruments skulls human body parts age-long covenants and he would set it on fire with joy and return back please help those under the anointing are we learning god is changing us in the name of jesus christ now please listen very carefully jesus sent us and it was clear that he sent us because of the results that we are bringing but if you have not stayed to understand your being sent and to understand the dynamics we're discussing act 16 you can leave and cast out demons and the demons can come out and you will be happy but you will be surprised to find out that casualties begin to happen that means before you ever sustain the courage to launch an attack make sure you are grounded as far as your spiritual fortification is concerned do you know what it means to hold a miracle service like this cast out devils dare these spirits and then go back home and sleep i lay me down and i wait for the lord sustain me I travel all the time i go from meetings to meetings nations to nations and there are all kinds of ways the devil can easily attempt accidents whatever whatever it is except for the fact that light can fortify you like chariot standing before a man can i tell you believe me you cannot pretend authority mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, 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 oh your lifting has come oh, 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 oh.
Your lifting has come. Your freedom has come. Oh, your freedom has come. Please sit down. One more scripture that gives us the basis to study about Satan, demons, and their operations. Two more, really. First Peter chapter 5, very quickly, and verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. May I request that we read it together? Ready? Please read. One to read. Be sober, the Bible says. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom... That means there is an operation of Satan that is in the similitude of a roaring lion. A roaring lion is a hungry lion meaning it is looking for food i watch a bit of national geographic not joe wild and sometimes i want to watch these animals and the lion can be patient with hunger and just allows maybe a herd passing or some antelopes or whatever it is and with precision and determination when it looks at one it does not see the rest again it will pursue that one with an energy watch this when the lion grabs it there are two assignments of the lion to kill the first is to bring it down because once that animal is not down the first assignment no matter how large sometimes it will be a coordinated it will be a coordinated attempt the entire pride will come in and they will bring especially if it's a big animal like an elephant it will bring it down assignment number two they will go to the throat immediately and hold it and stay for as long as they will stay when it dies they can now settle down there's no reason to rush it's already dead so the bible says satan as a roaring lion meaning when he comes around you he's not joking he's not playing games he's not april fool he means everything he wants to do and he says he walketh about seeking 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 whom he may devour but i've also watched times when the lion made costly mistakes that he died for for instance elephants or something and then it just comes and tries to play games and the elephant will lift it like that lift it like he's playing a football dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekatos. Katebranda Katapakotos Kotopre Kateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.